that, but what's the curriculum? What's the tool that helps me identify um, how I can change, right? The how I can change kind of thing. So that's the thing that will come at the end of this, and I think that'll be one of the unique approaches that you'll find in terms of instilling more or higher level of customer service in your business. Is that a deal? All right, and I know we have hard stop at five. That's always our goal. Yes. Does that still work? All right, we'll make that happen. All right, we're class customer service. So this is the guy that I always throw up there because there's always a few things that uh, I might say or might come up in the discussion where someone will go, been there, done that, don't want to think about it, that's really too crazy for me, right? And so all I'm going to suggest is you've got to keep your head in what we call in the question. And to stay in the question allows your brain to remain porous to the new idea because when the brain gets stimulated by a question, it actually wants to seek out the solution. If the brain stays in solution mode based on prior experience, it goes dormant to being sponge-like. Does that make sense? So, um, in this case, isn't that interesting? There he goes. I'm working through my computer. I'm going to get like this. All right, so we got this huge crowd here today. So, what is customer service to you all? Just sort of, you know, articulate it, or maybe even articulate some good or bad that you've experienced. Casey? I think it's about the experience the customer has when you're in your shop, in your place of business. Hey, Christine. Hello. It's the experience? It's the experience. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Interaction. The interaction between? The customer and Yeah. Okay. Customer Giving people service. what they expect. What is it? It's everything. Customer service is everything? It is. Yeah. It is. Okay. Give guys, them more than what they expect. Yes, you guys could actually give this today. You're right on. You're right on. So it, it, it really is. It really is. Um, creating, I, I like to call it creating the great experience. We often ask clients that the fourth important question for really understanding and exploring what your client wants or your customer wants. The last one is what do I have to give them to make a great decision right now? A decision that they won't have any remorse about. Well, this is the same thing. It's sort of the end game when it comes to customer service. It's creating that great experience. All right, so how are we going to go about doing that? So the foundational element of any successful business is, on a select basis, is to create raving fans, right, at the end of the day. Now, we've got to be true to our teaching and our coaching. We don't do that across our entire client base because we know that if we were to evaluate our clients, we have some A and B clients, and those are the ones we want to move up the ladder of loyalty, right, and create raving fans. But then we also got some C and D clients. Right? The ones that always negotiate, the ones that don't pay on time, the ones that want every element of deep. So we know that some of them aren't that easy and we don't really want to invest all that time and money in trying to move them up the ladder of loyalty or creating raving fans out of them. Right? So that's just the part of being selective. So here is that ladder of loyalty. We're going to go through every step and we're going to talk about how you move customers and how you can uh, in part, great customer service at every level. So the suspect, the prospect, the shopper will define each of these for you, customer, member, advocate, and then last but not least, the raving fan. And as we all know, customers don't become raving fans after one transaction. Actually, unfortunately, what does happen is the business experiences that first transaction and then stops marketing and serving that client forgets that it is a relationship-based uh, business, not a transaction-only based business. So lots of times businesses don't grow because they don't take that business past this point. So let's define that, all right? So we'll start with shopper. Uh, shopper. We'll start with suspect. How many times have I given this thing? Right, so someone is a suspect if they're in, what have I said before that you really got to be good at defining? Your target market. I took a client through that for the first time. This guy's in the training business, athletic training business. And he has four different trainers in this business. And each of the trainers, in the beginning, because they weren't talking about it, they really didn't understand what target market was. They all wanted to go after what they thought were different segments. Right? There'd be no scale, no momentum, no synergy in that business. Right? If they all went off and just said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to 
I'm going to train meatheads, I'm going to train grade school kids, I'm going to train high school athletes only, and I'm going to train weekend warriors. That would be a very highly fragmented, if not, uh, not period, a target market, right? right? So you, you want to really create or identify your target market first. That is your suspect. That's the first rung of the ladder. This is the group that you market to. When you're trying to grow your business and bring in new leads, new, new clients, it is your target market that you create that message for and you market to that. The prospect. What's a prospect? Possible. It's a possible. Yeah. It's somebody who raises their hand. It's somebody who says, I'm going to take some action. I'm, I might, for retail, I'm going to go visit. Right? Or before I do that, which is sometimes the phantom lead, is they visit you online oh, first or, online. or they call you. Right? Those are the people who are, who are really, really risk averse. They want to find out about you without you finding out about them. So what do we have to do about a prospect or a lead like that? To engage them in something. See, yeah. So whether it's online or it's over the phone or it's whatever you're, it's what you, it's your message. It's your offer, right? It's your offer. It's got to be impactful and your unique selling proposition. That's how you brush them out of the, uh, get them out of the woods, right? Now, when they come out of the woods and they raise their hand, they kind of come to finally visit you, that's when you've got to get your details. Now, I know Casey will talk about how you can get those same details in a digital world, right? If you have a real strong offer out, out there on your website, uh-oh, turn it off. I forgot to turn this off. Get it. I got it. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, it was going to rain. Didn't want to rain. But we can do that in the digital world as well, right? So if you have a strong offer on your website, and behind that offer there's something of some perceived value, but before they can get it, they have to give you some what? Information. Contact information. So there's the way to get it in the phantom world as well. That's how we're dealing. It's got to be a strong offer. That's how we differentiate. You'll see this when we give you the ideation tool a little bit later. It's about stimulating awareness. I'll show you how to do that. All right, after suspect, prospect, then we have a shopper. I might have to change that name because shopper, sometimes we relate to that as being the tire kicker. Mm -hmm. Shopper is actually somebody who will buy something from you. They'll buy once, and in some cases that is a kicking of the tire in some, in some instances. But they'll buy something, and then that's when you really confirm, do I understand that new customer. That's when we begin to qualify whether or not they're going to be a potential rating fan. And you'll know it too by how you interact with that customer the first time. So they are a shopper and you confirm details. These are different details. This is not an email address. This is more about their demographics, their buying behaviors, what did they want, what did they buy in terms of the need to get the want. This is more detail about them at this point. Now you're really sort of qualifying them to move them further up the ladder of loyalty. All right? Now we want them to become a customer. All too often, as I've said before, lots of businesses don't do this. Don't go after that second level of detail once that client or customer buys the first time. And they quit marketing to them. They just literally quit marketing to them. Your most valuable asset is your current and past customer database. It's the first place we go to regenerate, rejuvenate uh, sales in a business. Let's go right back to that database. Because they, for the most part, they know you already. You don't have to go all the way back to awareness with them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So a customer, I mean, here's the good news. We say that at that point, the customer becomes accustomed to buying from you, and they buy at least the second time. At least the second time. And now, now you really get to know them better. You're spoiling them in a sense. You're further qualifying them and determining, geez, would these people make great members? So when you think of member as a client, what do you think about? Belonging. Good. Geez, you read the next slide. <laughs> what else? Partnership. Yeah. What other companies do you think about that have done this? I, I guess well. Boom. Right. All of those. All of those. 
I think I got really excited at one of my last seminars. I was talking about.